Okay, so welcome to the first video on the series on statics. And the first thing that I want to talk about is what is the reason behind studying statics? Well, first of all, statics is the study of things that do not move. So right off the bat, you can tell that statics is concerned with the study of things like structure. So for example, a building or something like a bridge. So you may have something like a, an arch bridge or a suspension bridge and then you have a whole bunch of things like that and statics also relates to the study of structures in terms of machines so you can also have something like a robotic arm and then you're going to calculate the forces that are acting on that robotic arm in terms of what, is, what are the materials, what are the dimensions, what are the properties of that particular structure that you need to have in order to withstand certain forces and certain motions so Statics plays a crucial role in both civil and mechanical engineering when you're studying things that either are static or things that need to have a certain strength. And those strength properties are usually concerned with in terms of how this thing actually behaves when it is not actually moving with respect to any reference frame. So the first concept that we need to talk about is, of course, the concept of equilibrium. So equilibrium is the central concept of statics and it basically says that when you have a body floating in space and I'm just going to use this kind of very generic shape here to denote any kind of structure or body the only way that this thing can actually be static with respect to a specific reference frame is if the sum of all the forces that are acting on it and we're talking about external forces because there are actually internal forces that will oppose these forces but that's something that we'll discuss later on all the static or the all the external forces acting on it need to add up to zero otherwise this thing would start moving around and that's not something that we want for example if you're designing a building like a skyscraper you don't want this thing moving back and forth or, or doing this kind of thing because you know that it's going to break and collapse and really bad things will happen. So we need to make sure that forces are always balanced. So the way that we do this is we say, okay, so let's say we have something in two dimensions and we're going to break it up into X and Y components. Then the logical thing to do is say, well, the sum of the forces in the X direction needs to be equal to zero otherwise this body would be moving either to the right or to the left and then the sum of the forces along the y direction also need to add up to zero because otherwise this whole thing would actually be moving in one of the directions so these are the two central equations that we will be using to analyze systems and solve for statics problems the next thing that we need, and we can obviously extend this to three dimensions, so I really recommend that you watch my playlist on vector algebra because you need to understand how vectors work before you actually understand how forces act on bodies and how statics actually work. So we're going to have three forces, so X, Y, and Z. So in that kind of reference frame, we're going to have a body, and then in that case, all the forces need to essentially add up to zero so the forces in the z direction also need to add up to zero and in shorthand notation we usually denote this in the following way we're going to have the sum of the forces and this will be a force vector so a force vector has three components we can write it in the following way fx fy and fz Alternatively, we can write it using the angle bracket notation. So we have F in the X direction, F in the Y direction, and then F in the Z direction. And then we can also have this in terms of the components. So Fx i hat plus Fy j hat plus Fz k hat. So these are the main things, and basically the sum of all the forces needs to add up to zero, otherwise this thing would be moving. So statics is all about things that do not move. Now you might be thinking, if you have done some relativity before, you might be thinking, well, that's not really true, because we know that we have the universe, right? And we have the sun, we have our solar system, a bunch of planets, and we have a galaxy, and then we have more galaxies around. Now, everything is actually moving you know, the universe is expanding, we know this because we have been able to measure it. So everything is moving with respect to everything else. So how can you claim that something can actually be static? 
Well, when it comes to statics, obviously in the context of mechanical and civil engineering, we refer to statics in the reference frame of the planet Earth. Because it doesn't make sense to design a structure that will be stable on another planet. We care about the conditions on Earth because that's where we build structures, essentially. So in that context, we only care about statics as seen from the reference frame of the Earth. So in our reference frame, if you're standing on top of the Earth, you're not actually seeing how this Earth is actually traveling thousands upon thousands of kilometers per second in our space. You're essentially just seeing everything as stationary when it comes to buildings. So that's what we mean by statics. We mean it in the sense of what is actually a useful reference frame for humans to build things upon. So that's essentially the context of this series. And the next thing that we're going to talk about, this is another central concept in statics, and it is that we need to have, if we have a body, and suppose that all the forces on it are balanced, we do not want any kind of rotations happening. So rotation is another type of motion. So in order to balance this out, we need to make sure that the sum of the torques about some point, let's say we pick a point here, and in fact, it shouldn't matter. The sum of the torques about any point on that body should be equal to zero. So basically, we don't want any rotations. And if there were, we would need to allow for that body to, let's say, we would put some kind of support here or, or somewhere else to essentially counteract the effect of those external torques. And in engineering, we tend to use the term moment in, instead of torque a lot more. And when we talk about moments, we talk about rotation as well. But they have slightly different interpretations. So moments are usually reserved for rotations that will cause some kind of bending. So suppose that you have some kind of beam that is fixed to a wall, and then you apply a force at one end. Well, this force, because we know that a torque is essentially just a force times some perpendicular distance from a pivot point, we know that this force will tend to cause a rotation in this direction, but because this rotation is associated with actual bending of this beam, so the beam would actually bend this way, so if you can imagine that it has a structure like this, then we, we usually call this a moment, whereas torque is usually reserved for things that actually rotate, so for example a spindle or something like a um, something that is part of a machine, a machine of some kind that is rotating, like a motor, then we would say the torque is just a force that is essentially just in the, in the axis of rotation of that particular structure, whereas a moment is not about the axis of rotation, but rather about some other axis, for example, this axis here, and then the rotation is actually causing some bending in the structure. So that's the main distinction between those two in, in an engineering context, but in general, they just mean the same. They're just associated with forces that cause rotation on the body. So these two conditions, or essentially one of them, needs to be met if we want the thing to be in static equilibrium. So in the next video, we're going to expand on this by presenting some examples, and then we'll talk about more interesting concepts.